Hello, this is Jeff of Tell Flare Mouse. A couple months ago we posted a video of the very rare gyrojet pistol and carbine. And these of course are rocket guns. They fire rocket projectiles. Now these guns were way ahead of their time, but still not quite ready for prime time. We learned that these guns were very inaccurate. We had a difficult time hitting anything at even 10 yards. And before I forget, I heard that Destin from Smarter Every Day is going to do a video about these rocket guns, so stay tuned for that. But we got a lot of comments over these, and a lot of people wondering with modern technology if we could make something like these today. Well, a viewer named Dominic decided to make some, and he simplified everything by not relying on gyroscopic spin stabilization. He's using the Diablo shape, which stabilizes without any spin. Now inside the large cavity is packed with our candy, a homemade rocket fuel. Now again, to keep things simple, we're not using any nozzle or any kind of restriction. So we're only getting a few grams of thrust. Now here I installed a restrictor plate with a three millimeter orifice on it, and it definitely gave us a lot more thrust. But just getting these things lit in the first place is gonna be half the battle. So we're not gonna use that in these tests. Now to get the R candy lit, we're gonna use five grains or less than a third of a gram of black powder. So that will not only ignite the rocket fuel, but also get the slug propelled down the barrel at a moderate speed. Now the gyrojet round is huge. It's the same diameter as a 50 BMG, just a little shorter. Now our rocket slug is 18 millimeters in diameter. Now this is a nine millimeter cartridge and it actually fits inside the cavity. Now there's a lot of things that can go wrong with these. My biggest fear is starting a fire. Uh, the slug can shatter in the barrel from the acceleration or they may not even light. So let's get out there and test them out. Welcome back Tauflater folks. Jeff and the OG back out here with you on the original Tauflater site. Uh, we are bringing you today a creation from a local guy who watched the gyrojet videos and he was intrigued and started thinking about how he could reproduce something like that. We want a projectile. He wanted to create a projectile that would burn on its own and carry itself downrange in theory. So uh, he's from Dinuba nearby. He created a 3D printed Diabolo shaped slug. Diabolo. Diabolo, the devil. No, no, no. It's it's a shape of a toy. Of a it's like a yo-yo almost. That's what I was In Europe, say. yeah. And he made the slug of that shape, but uh, in the end of it is uh, what, rocket fuel or? Our candy, I believe, it, you know, it's sugar and he said potass or, uh, and uh, potassium nitrate, I think. Sure. Or Tastes great, less filling. Yeah. So uh, that's been uh, put into the rear of this thing. Jeff also put in about five grains of, uh, of black powder into this just to give it a little oomph to get it out of the barrel. And then hopefully, in theory, this thing's gonna ignite, carry itself down range where we have a jug of uh, blue water waiting for you and some other targets. We're gonna see how these things fly and what they look like on the, uh, the slow-mo camera. Yeah, it's a lot of things can go wrong here. Many great. things. He says, as I'm sitting down behind the trigger. Well, I'm worried about catching the bushes on fire. Why not but... just have a slug full of gasoline and <laughs> TNT? Yep, Let's yep. get to it. Shot number one, less than 10 yards away. I'm ready. This will give us an idea if they're accurate. If we can slowly start pulling it out further and further and get better and better shots. So, I'm ready when you are. I'm ready. Zero recoil. Smells yeah. like fireworks. Yeah. It, went, it hit the jug. Yep, yeah, it did. Now this one, we weren't sure if it lit or not, but you can definitely see a faint trail of smoke coming off the back of it. And it was relatively accurate. I was My biggest worry was these things were gonna fly off and land in that tree off to the left there and catch it on fire. But even though it was relatively low velocity, it had enough energy to blast all the way through that water jug. We'll move the target back a couple yards for the next shot. Shot number two. Just had a piece of particle board. I'm ready. Wow. 
was actually pretty good on. Wow. Now this is the same range we were shooting the gyro jets, and we were having trouble hitting a watermelon sized target at that range. Now, even though this rocket slug was kind of waggling around a little bit, it was still incredibly accurate. He nailed it right in the center. Okay, number three. I'm ready. Woo! Cloud of black time. <laughs> Now these were not the most stable projectiles we've ever shot, but not the worst. The important thing here is that we're hitting things at 10 yards with these things, and they are lighting off, which surprised me. I thought we were going to have a lot more trouble just getting these things lit. Should have shot them at night. Shot them at night, yeah. That works well with the high-speed cameras. <laughs> okay. And Okay, I'm ready. Well, this is our first failure. You can see that the slug is broken in a couple pieces upon leaving the barrel. You'll also notice there's some steel shot flying along with everything. That's because Dominic added a little bit of ballast to the nose of these, at least some of them. But like I always say, no test is complete without some kind of failure. Where are you aiming? You need a laser beam on there so people know where you're aiming. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, oh yeah we got ignition it's on fire down there. <laughs> that's why we have that big board there to stop them now once again we had a failure the very tip of the slug snapped off during acceleration but it gives you an idea how fragile these things are if we load them any hotter we would have probably had a 100% failure rate. So we were really close on just the right amount of powder. So you can probably see I was aiming here. The round went in sideways here. It was tumbling through the air as you can see there on the slow-mo. And once again came apart. If you couldn't see, once this thing went through the cardboard and hit the wooden backstop, it was burning and hissing as it hit the table and landed on the ground. So still going. Yeah, it burned for about two or three seconds. Got to have a ballistic booger shot, right? <laughs> Especially if it catches on fire inside. That would be cool. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> it's still burning. Wow! It's still burning right now. <laughs> Not the table. Yeah. My wife's going to be so mad. <laughs> Now this one, it didn't shatter. We had ignition, but we had terrible stability. The slug just tumbled around like a rag doll. And now this one may not have had the steel shot in it, so we didn't have the proper balance. But despite that, he still hit that little tiny target from around 10 yards away. So it wasn't a complete loss. I mean, these things are still more accurate than the gyro jets. Okay, so this is kind of cool. This is what we found out here. This slug landed just like this after it passed through our gel block and it was continuing to burn and smoke. You saw it there on camera. And just like a firework that's been sitting too long, it uh, burned up against the blackboard here and might have scarred uh, Mrs. Flatermouse's yard sale table. <laughs> so hopefully one won't be in trouble. Okay, we got a zombie head there. I hope that's not too uh, frightening for YouTube these days. It looks kind of like the Night King on uh, Game of Thrones. I don't watch that show. Ice King, Frozen King. Something. Oh, okay, that sounds good. I'm not <laughs> quite caught up with this modern stuff. Are you binge watching Andy, Andy Griffith? <laughs> All the time, yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Oh. Woo! In the face! Didn't have too much problems with this one it flew relatively straight up until the end but we can see a nice little flame kernel coming out of the back of that one and right in the eyeball now I've got to admit to you I had very little hope for these things I there's just so many things that can go wrong nobody's ever done it before and you know it's kind of like rocket science new target are you ready I'm ready okay hit it Woo! Oh. 
<laughs> Cutting his hair. Well, that one appeared to be another good shot. Let's see what the Kronos high-speed camera has to say about that. The Kronos does not lie. As we can see, the slug is broken into two pieces. Again, we see the steel shot, but what a heck of an epic shot. That poor bear got blasted from one end to the other. I mean, that's like a Hollywood shot there, you know, where a guy gets shot and he flies through the barn door or something like that. You know, how Hollywood never gets anything right regarding guns. <laughs> About 15 yards now? About 150 yards, yeah. Well, yeah. Metric yards. Seven millimeters. Metric yards, I say. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, still burning. <laughs> Not a bad shot for 15 yards, but again we see the slug weaving and yawing and pitching around. Now it's entirely possible even that small amount of thrust coming out of the back of this thing is kind of throwing off its stability a little bit. But I, I can't complain because for the most part these things were a really good success for just the first time ever attempting this, you know? Okay, you're aiming at the little orange circles? Yes, the green uh, squares? Yes, I'm ready! Oh. <laughs> Did it go through? I don't think so. It may have. Now, in my opinion, this one was the best of the best. This one I mixed a little bit of magnesium shavings with it so we could get some actual sparks and flames coming out of the back. And it looks pretty cool. I mean, it was, it was relatively accurate, but just the way it changed altitude several times downrange was just too funny. But I thought that was just the coolest shot of the day. But I think we learned a heck of a lot of things in this experiment and things can only get better from here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you'll take a second to rate it, good or bad, it doesn't matter. And if you aren't subscribed, consider subscribing. And hit that notification bell. I don't know why you have to hit that too, but a lot of people don't get our videos in their feeds, even though they're subscribed to us. It's, it's crazy. But of course, we want to thank our Patreon supporters who keep this channel alive, so we don't have to use those sponsored ads for video games and stuff and turn our videos into like some kind of weird infomercial in the middle of them. We really want to avoid doing that. Thanks for watching.